The U.S. Air Force's venerable F-22 Raptor is widely seen as the world's most capable air superiority fighter. But for a short time, it was nearly joined by a sister platform modified specifically for the purposes of the U.S. Navy in the NATF-22. The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor came about as a result of the U.S. Air Force's advanced tactical fighter program that aimed to field an all-new aircraft that could not only compete with advanced Soviet jets like the Sukhoi Su-27 and Mikoyan MiG-29, but dominate them. The Su-27 and MiG-29 had both been developed with America's F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon squarely in their sights, and though the Soviet Union was on its last leg by the late 1980s, the Air Force remained steadfast in their need for a new generation of fighter. Ultimately, the F-22 Raptor won out over its arguably more capable Northrop YF-23 competition, thanks in no small part to Lockheed's flair for dramatic presentations and Northrop's troubled reputation at the time. While the YF-23 boasted better range and stealth, the YF-22 and its operational F-22 successor offered a combination of solid capability and Lockheed Martin's reputation for delivering highly capable military aircraft. While the YF-22 ultimately won the decision, either aircraft would have gone on to become the world's first operational stealth fighter, establishing a new generation of fighters to come that we know today as the fifth generation. Had the YF-23 won out, it would have been the de facto choice for a new Navy fighter variant that was up for consideration at the time. And while some still contend that an F-23 could have been the superior fighter, the F-22 quickly separated itself from its operational competition thanks to a combination of low observability, high speed, and acrobatic performance. The Raptor was not only able to reach and sustain speeds as high as Mach 2.25, it also offered the ability to supercruise, or to maintain supersonic speeds without the use of its afterburners. And all that thrust pouring out of those engines was managed by the aircraft's thrust vector control surfaces, which allow the pilot to orient the outflow of the engines independent of the direction the aircraft is actually pointed in. In other words, an F-22 pilot can actually point the nose and weapons of the aircraft down at you as it flies by, pushing forward. The F-22 proved so capable, in fact, that Congress pressed the Navy to consider adopting a sweep-wing version of the new fighter under the NATF, or Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, that began back in 1988. In return for the Navy considering the NATF as a potentially lower-cost alternative to developing their own replacement carrier-based fighter, the U.S. Air Force agreed to evaluate a modified version of the carrier-based stealth bomber being developed under the Navy's Advanced Tactical Aircraft Program as a replacement for its own aging F-111. In theory, this agreement would allow the Air Force to leverage Navy R&D for their new bomber, while the Navy leveraged the Air Forces for their new fighter. This approach to sharing development cost across branches, one could argue, would reach its zenith when multiple combat aircraft programs across the Navy, Air Force, and Marines were merged to create what would go on to become the incredibly expensive F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program. And in a prelude to F-35 troubles to come, the NATF program and its associated plans for an NATF-22 were soon seen as prohibitively expensive. By 1990, some seven years before the F-22 would first take to the sky, Admiral Richard Dunleavy, the man responsible for outlining the Navy's requirements for a new fighter, was quoted as saying that he didn't see any way the F-22 could be incorporated into an affordable plan for naval aviation. As a result, the NATF-22 concept was dropped in early 1991. And had the U.S. Navy opted to pursue a carrier-capable variant of the F-22, there would have been a number of significant technical hurdles to overcome. Aircraft designed for carrier operations have to manage a very different set of takeoff and landing challenges than their land-based counterparts. The fuselage needs to be more physically robust to withstand the incredible forces applied to it during catapult launches and short-distance landings, supported by a tailhook at the rear of the aircraft. The NATF-22 would also have to leverage the same sort of variable sweep-wing approach found on the F-14 Tomcat to grant the aircraft the ability to fly slowly enough 
to safely land aboard a carrier at sea. That variable sweep wing design itself brought a slew of its own problems engineers would need to contend with. First and foremost, the Navy was already dealing with the high cost of maintaining the sweep wing apparatus on the F-14. A new sweep wing design likely wouldn't alleviate the high operational costs associated with the existing Tomcat. And as the Air Force has gone on to prove, the Navy's decision was probably right. Even with fixed wings, the F-22 remains one of the most expensive fighter platforms to operate by the hour. At the end of the day, it's easy to see why the U.S. Navy opted not to pursue the NATF-22. It was complicated, expensive, and it may have only offered a slight improvement over the Navy's existing carrier-based platforms. But nonsensical as it may be in practical use, the very concept of a variable sweep wing F-22 carrying on the legacy of the fan-favorite F-14 Tomcat aboard America's supercarriers is just too cool not to look back on a bit wistfully. After all, with only 186 F-22 Raptors ever rolling out of Lockheed Martin's factories, the King of Sky Combat is destined to have a painfully short reign. One has to wonder, could a Navy variant of the F-22 have been enough to save this program from the budgetary acts? We'll never know. The sad truth is, probably not. These pictures are likely the closest we'll ever get to seeing a real sweep wing F-22. And that's it for this week's edition of Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for the latest in news, entertainment, and information from all around the force. Click like and subscribe down below this video if you liked it, and don't forget to tap on that bell icon so that you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.